All right, so it says the function f is a one-to-one -one function defined by that equation. So it already tells us that's important. It already tells us it's one-to-one -one up there. Uh, if it's one-to-one, -one, that means we can find the inverse. And that's what it wants us to do, determine an expression for the inverse of f. Okay, so just remember our steps. The first thing is replace the f of x with a y. So a cubed root of 3x plus 3 minus 3. Okay, now next step, step number two, is to switch the x and the y. So x is equal to 8 cubed root of 3y plus 3 minus 3. Okay, now I just had to get y by itself. And that's, this is usually the toughest step. Uh, that means i got to start moving, you know, get isolating the y. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 3 since it's a separate term and add it over. So I have x plus 3 equals 8 cubed root of 3y plus 3. Get rid of the 8. I can divide by 8. So now I have x plus 3 over 8 equals cubed root of 3y plus 3. I cube both sides. Get rid of the cubed root. So now I have, I'm going to put the x plus 3 cubed on top. Then I can cube the 8. Uh, that's 8 times 8 times 8. I'll grab a calculator to find that here in just a second. And then on the right side, though, so that 8 cubed is 512. 512. Okay, now I just have the 3y plus 3 left over here. I could minus the 3 over. I'm using lots of space here. I'm going to come over here just a little bit. So I end up with uh, x plus 3 cubed over 512 minus 3 equals 3y. Uh, divide by 3. Now when I divide by 3, I'm going to divide each of these by 3. When you divide by 3 over here, the 3 just goes in the bottom. Divide that by 3. So we're going to go 3 times 512. So we end up with x plus 3 cubed over and 3 times 512 is 1,536. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And that's what y equals, or that's the inverse of f of x. Okay, so let's put that in there. Then we're going to go back and find uh, the domain and range. So let's first put in that, our, what the inverse is. So it was, I'm going to do a fraction. Uh, let's see. back to here. Okay, so on top we have, grab my keyboard again, x plus 3 cubed. Over 1,536 minus 1. And that's the inverse. Okay. Now it wants me to find both the domain and the domain and range of the inverse of, a, of f of x. Um, so to find the domain, uh, we just look at the, my answer. So here's my answer, my function down here, right? This is my function. So the question is, are there any restrictions on the domain? So the two things we look for, is there a square root or is there an x on the bottom of the fraction? We do have a fraction, but there's no x. So I'm never going to get a 0 on the bottom of the fraction. There's no square root. Uh, so the domain ought to be uh, negative infinity to infinity. For the range, the easiest way to find the range is to look for the domain of the original function. Right? If we find the domain of the original function, that will be the range of the inverse function. So if you look at this one, it does have a radical sign, but it's a cubed root. A square root, you cannot have negatives inside of a square root. So that limits or restricts our domain. You can have a negative inside of a cube root. So there is no restriction on the domain of, of that. Okay. So what that means is there, 
the domain of this graph is also negative infinity to infinity, which means the range of our inverse is negative infinity to infinity. So on both these, it should just be all real numbers, but it wants us to use interval notation. Um, so we're going to use, we're going to go ahead and um, use interval notation to put this inside, just be negative infinity to infinity. Oops, one too many there. Okay, and then the range is the same thing. All right, check our answer, looks good.